So the first question that I'll um, put out there um, that came in was, um, what uh, refinements might we see in the foreseeable future um, for the program? Uh, we have a list of items we think we'd like to add in terms of functionality. Uh, I'll give you an example. On the dairy side, <clears throat> right now we're not doing much with, with water. Um, we're kind of ignoring rainfall and, and how much that might contribute to uh, lagoon storage and so forth. We know that's a, a critical component. There are some other tools out there that take that into account, so we think that's one that we could easily bring into the model, uh, but we haven't yet. Um, so that's at least one uh, piece of functionality we could add. Um, Brian or Andrea, do you have other thoughts uh, with regard to future refinements? So this is Brian. Um, and I've showed the potential of rectofamine to do some things, and I think there's some things that we can do with the equation side and the dynamics uh, with the new Swine NRC coming out uh, uh, just less than two years ago. Uh, there is some, some improved equations on the animal side and nutrient retention composition. So I think there's some updating there that we can do. There also is some uh, changes that I think will be interesting to see how we can change some dynamics related to uh, potassium. We don't do very much with potassium very well. And so I think we need to improve that a little bit and do some different things there. The challenge is, is that some of these uh, there isn't a lot of recent data to look at. A lot of people look at nitrogen and phosphorus, but the potassium side is, is a little bit more uh, sparse. Uh, and so there's a couple of things there related to some things that I think we can change pretty pretty easily that may help uh, improve the accuracy and, and predicting each farm a little bit better. This is Andrea, okay. and I'd just like to reiterate what he said. We're working on the beef side. Um, to come up with better equations all the time. And we are currently actually uh, working on some projects looking at uh, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, and then phosphorus and nitrogen to better predict all of those uh, concentrations in the manure. And I think Andrea just brought up a good mineral. I mean, we feed a lot of distillers now, and our sulfur side has gotten a lot higher than it has in a long time uh, on the pig side. And usually we don't ever consider sulfur. But... Uh, that's one that uh, it creates some, some challenges related to some different things. And um, the potassium thing is, is one of those things that I want to just mention one little other tidbit to that is that we see even just sort of in the Purdue Animal Sciences farms that it, we've had to move species manure because we've caught and gotten our potassium too high around our dairy facility. Uh, from a land standpoint and, and utilization and issues related to that. And so it can create some nutrition issues with those forages. Um, and so we're looking at moving and piping manure from different species to alter the soil profile and cropping then, you know, forage harvest down the road. And so there's some things related to potassium that I think we haven't got uh, pulled together quite as well as we'd like. Okay. Um and feel free to shoot us a message uh, on functionality you, you folks out there as potential users would see. Um, we're very open to that, too. A second question came in, and I think this would be for Andrea. For the beef tool, can you use more than one diet during the feeding period? Uh, in other words, kind of like with the poultry where you had a three-phase feeding. Can you do a multiple-phase feeding with the beef tool? Sure, and we have had a few people ask about that uh, in other uh, meetings. And yes, you can. Uh, it's not set up quite the same way as the poultry, but uh, you essentially have to make three cattle groups and then give each of them their own diet, and then uh, it will calculate the total nutrients excreted. You'll just change uh, how many days those cattle are on each diet, and it will uh, then add them all together for the end. So yes, you can. Okay, great. And then um, <clears throat> the last question that I know that's in so far um, is how do you manage producing a balanced manure fertilizer. Um, do you want to take a first shot at that, Andrea? Sure. Um, that's a good question. Uh, it really goes back to the initial is what are we feeding these animals and having a better understanding of their mineral requirements. And then, uh, as we've already uh, suggested, having a better understanding of the equations or the how much is retained within the animals to better predict 
the excretion of those minerals. And so uh, really um, soil tests and knowing your fields or the, the fields that you're going to be applying manure onto to know how much of each nutrient is needed is important and then to test your manure or to use this to uh, predict how much of each nutrient is going to be in your manure and closely match that to what the needs are. So whether you're applying to meet the nitrogen needs, the phosphorus needs, the potassium needs, uh, as Brian said, can sometimes be an issue. Certainly depending on the part of country that you're in, uh, sulfur may be too high and you need to watch that when you're deciding how much manure to apply. So I think the keys are to know your manure and then to know your fields and uh, work then through your feeding program to closely match the nutrients that are needed. Okay. And I think with additional technologies that are out there to begin, um, I'll call it stripping out uh, different nutrients, say phosphorus or nitrogen, out of the manure stream, um, I think it is possible to um, begin to look at having custom fertilizers that might be able to actually produce it to farm. So I think that's kind of our, our future. Um, two last questions that I see come in, and then I think we may wrap it up because we're at the hour point right now. Um, this question, does, uh, does this program calculate nutrient retention for each operation based on weight gain, export of meat and milk, eggs, et cetera, um, <clears throat> to estimate nutrient excretion, or do you use egg waste field management handbook defaults? We've used a uh, approach where we've taken the original equations that were produced back in um, 2005 for the ASAB standards for nutrient excretion and, and so forth. So uh, the approaches are fairly similar to the way Ag Waste Field Management Handbook might end up with their numbers, but I would say ours are probably uh, the most current and most accurate. I do know that a couple of different chapters within the Ag Waste Field Management Handbook have been updated um, since we published some of this information. So I, th I think there's fairly good agreement, but you know, you, if you were to run two different tools, you might come up with a slightly different answer. So. Um, then the next question is, do you think the information learned in the use of this tool can be used to help with human nutritional needs? Uh, no. I mean, we, we've clearly got all these equations are in there based on a cattle species. So um, I think it's, you know, maybe if you considered uh, the monogastric of the pig being similar to the human, but um, I, I, I would really caution against doing anything uh, along those lines. So. Yeah, I'd agree with you uh, there, Joel. Uh, even though we have monogastric equations in there, as an example, a sow nurses 12 to 13 piglets, not one individual. Uh, you know, there's completely different targets, growth. Uh, we're trying to maximize growth. Humans, we don't do that. Uh, if we overeat as a human, we become obese, and a livestock animal will continue to put that on as, as muscle, uh, maybe with some fat. But, yeah, these don't have any application to human nutrition. Okay, um, so I see there's still one more question coming in from Petra. Um, do you have defaults for nitrogen and phosphorus content of meat, milk, and eggs uh, for your retention calculations that can be accessed by the user? Um, yeah, the equations are all there, um, and they'll be as pop-ups, um, and or we can provide those to you, so that's, that's easy. So send us uh, an email. It's all public information, so we can get it to you. But we're really trying to make these tools transparent, so that folks don't consider them being a black box. So really want uh, the credibility to be there. 